Sacramento, California, on the American River, Auburn Cofferdam was built in the early 1970s. It diverted the river flows around the construction area for the foundation of the proposed Auburn Dam. The earthen cofferdam was modified in the late 1970s. At that time, a safety plug, a soft plug, was built into the right abutment and the remainder of the structure was raised eight feet. The plug was designed to erode if the capacity of the cofferdam was ever exceeded. This would allow the dam to fail gradually and the stored water to be released over a period of hours. This slow breach would also restrict the amount of the embankment material entering the river. Downstream, Folsom Dam and Reservoir was operated on the assumption that Auburn Coffer Dam would fail if its capacity was exceeded. For computation purposes, the water stored behind the Coffer Dam was added to Folsom storage. California's unprecedented storms of February 1986 resulted in large inflows that exceeded the diversion and storage capacity of Auburn Cofferdam. On February 18th, the safety plug in the right spillway of the Cofferdam was overtopped and it began to erode as designed. The erosion of the spillway and drainage of the reservoir behind the Cofferdam occurred over a period of about 12 hours. Bureau of Reclamation personnel videotaped and photographed the failure beginning at about 6 a.m. and continuing until late afternoon on the 18th. The erosion of the safety plug was essentially completed by about 3 p.m. The following footage is a chronology of the designed breach of Auburn Cofferdam. The Cofferdam was functioning properly before the flooding occurred. From these views, you can see some of the foundation work that had been completed before the Auburn Dam project was stopped several years ago. These shots were taken beginning at about 6.30 a.m. on February 18th. They show the overtopping and the beginning erosion over the spillway plug. Downstream from the cofferdam, erosion is starting to take place along the edges of the spillway channel. At this time, some erosion of the spillway plug has probably occurred. As the time progresses, more erosion takes place. Note the elevation of the water behind the cofferdam in relation to the road on the left abutment. As the plug continues to erode, the water level behind the dam will drop. The flow is now sufficient to start erosion on the edge of the spillway canal downstream from the cofferdam. The water quality dam downstream had previously been breached for other purposes by earth moving equipment. In the spillway, the erosion is horseshoe shaped as it progresses upstream toward the spillway plug. A short time later, the horseshoe shaped erosion has gained momentum. The diversion tunnel is discharging below the previously breached water quality dam. Massive erosion along the downstream edge of the spillway channel is beginning to take place. The water eats into the toe of the dam. Huge chunks of earth begin to crumble into the flow. The spillway dramatically continues to erode. A distant view shows the spillway channel erosion. Significant erosion continues on the cofferdam. Downstream, the diversion tunnel continues its discharge. A swirl forms in the cofferdam reservoir at the intake for the diversion tunnel. The horseshoe erosion near the left side of the channel continues to move upstream. A substantial quantity of earth is being moved by the large flow of water. As the water eats further into the structure, the pace of the erosion speeds up. The erosion has progressed through the entire spillway channel and is starting to move back to the plug. The spillway erosion has moved back beyond the access road. 
will flow through the spillway channel and the erosion continues to increase. The erosion on the right side of the channel has almost reached the safety plug. It is now noon on February 18th. From a helicopter, we get a different perspective as the erosion nears the plug. The flow is substantial, and the elevation in the reservoir is still near its maximum. Now, the first stage of erosion has reached the plug area. A second stage is moving back towards the spillway and the cofferdam. The water elevation on the downstream face of the dam is rising very rapidly. This indicates a much increased flow through the spillway. The reservoir elevation is still close to maximum. The breached water quality dam and diversion outlet as they looked from the air. Because of the backwater effect of the high flow in the channel, the discharge through the diversion tunnel has probably decreased. The erosion in the spillway continues at a significant rate as the downstream water surface elevation continues to rise. Now it's about 2 p.m. The erosion has worked its way into the reservoir area and the water surface elevation begins to drop at a substantial rate. Upstream from the reservoir, the heavy flows have forced a log boom to break loose and the debris in the upper part of the picture moves toward the spillway channel. The erosion continues in two stages. The level of the reservoir drops and the flows become greater. The debris of logs moves into the opening. Downstream, the water elevation continues to rise, while in the reservoir, the elevation has dropped substantially. This is the situation about 2.30 p.m. on February 18th. 30 minutes later, at approximately 3 p.m., the erosion of the safety plug was substantially completed. All of the water in the Auburn Cofferdam Reservoir flowed downstream into Folsom Reservoir. This effect had been considered prior to the Cofferdam failure, and space had been reserved in Folsom. Here, on February 18th, the discharge through the spillway gates at Folsom was approximately 130,000 cubic feet per second. Nimbus Dam, which forms an afterbay below Folsom, also discharging 130,000 cubic feet per second. This was 15,000 cubic feet per second greater than the design flow of the floodway downstream. However, the floodway levee held. On February 19th, the day after the breach, this is what Auburn Cofferdam looked like. Downstream, you can see the sedimentation on the left side. If you look closely, some of the foundation work can be seen in this upstream view. Again, Auburn Cofferdam the day after the breach. Though Auburn Cofferdam failed, it did so by design. The gradual breach took several hours to complete.